viewing this. After this evening, we apologize. We had technical difficulties. We did record it, and it will be played, but it is not live, unfortunately. Um, tonight is December 16th. Um, 2014, and we are here at the Municipal Budget Committee to review SAU 90's budget for the coming, the next year, and um, if everybody would rise and pledge allegiance to the flag. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Also, this evening, we do not have Joan with us. She will um, record the minutes. Oh, that'll all be interesting. Um, Stephen, you will be doing backup tonight on the votes. Yes. And since we're going to depend on this recording to be there later, if you could take a little bit of what we say tonight. I'll try to keep All up right. with it. I, I don't take shorthand. That's no, the no, thing. I'm, I'm just you know. just an overview of the motions and, oh, and the numbers, oh, okay? Oh, yes, just to make sure, because we don't have Tim either tonight. Wow, this is a perfect storm of uh, technology going <laughs> wrong, if ever I heard it. Okay, with that being said, I'm going to start over here with Joe, gentlemen, and go around the table and have everyone introduce themselves. And when we get to Mr. Lunny, Mr. Lunny, if you would do us the favor of introducing everyone behind you, because they've joined us this evening and they certainly deserve to be recognized for being here with us. Joe? Joe Wisbowski. Uh, Sonny Kravitz. Mike Pierce. Brian Lapham. Gary Zanoy here. Eileen Latimer, Chairman. Mike Pluff. Stephen LeBranche. Jim O'Loughlin. Glenn Farrell. Bob Ladd. Jim Waddell. Mm -hmm. Dave Wood. <coughs> Nathan Lunny, Business Administrator. Behind us, we're joined tonight not only by uh, Jerry Zanoy from the school board, but uh, school board members Rusty Bridal and Andrea Shepherd. Additionally, we have two of our principals, uh, Dave O'Connor from the Hampton Academy, as well as Tim Lannon from Center School. Uh, Lois Costa, principal at Marston, sends her regrets. The children of her school are uh, providing a holiday concert this evening at the same time. So she's tied up there. Mm -hmm. Additionally, we have Sarah Stetson, our Director of Pupil Services, and Greg Lynn Paris, our Director of Technology. And we, Thank appreci you we appreciate them for being, being here with here. us. <coughs> Tell Lois for all the fine work and recognition that she's gotten this year. We gave her a free pass tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. All right. Um, Jerry, I'm going to ask you to move to budget amount. Madam Chairman, I move the uh, school budget for 15-16. Um, 15-16. For $20,061,260. Okay. Okay. And before we get into discussion, you all have your books. They're all, it's all broken up into sections. Um, our finance director, Mr. Lunny, does an excellent job on giving a presentation. I look forward to it every year. You've got to teach some of the others how to do this. Um, and you do a much better job than we do even going through our books. I'm going to turn it over to you and, and to Superintendent Murphy as we go through this. And at the end of the presentation, we will go around. So. Write down your questions so that we can get through the whole presentation at least uninterrupted, and then we'll take it through the sections so it's not overwhelming and we're not jumping back and forth. Um, so if you would, just write down what you want to ask at the end. Well, good evening. Uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to be with you tonight. Um, Nathan and I have prepared a budget that we think reflects the needs of the school district um, and will meet the needs of our students. I would be remiss tonight if I didn't take a minute before I go through a couple of pieces of information before Nate, Nate jumps into the numbers. I would be remiss this evening by not thanking the community. 
Um, we recently had two members of our staff, one of them is here, Timothy Lannon, and as you know, Lois Costa, both just recently back from Washington, D.C., because they were recognized nationally for their achievement. And that achievement is reflected in our students and our <coughs> students' performance. And for Tim, it was Tim uh, Center School and his staff was recognized as a National Blue Ribbon School of Excellence based on student performance. That's the assessments that are given in third grade. Um, his youngsters uh, have uh, consistently scored uh, with an index score of 90 in the 90th percentile. And as a result, was recognized by the New Hampshire Department of Ed and then subsequently nominated to the, uh, to the uh, na uh, uh, National uh, Department of Education. U.S. Department of Education uh, to be uh, a nominee for this award after a lot of our review of data that uh, Tim and his staff sent. Uh, they were just recently recognized with that award. Uh, Lois, as you know, I, you just mentioned it, you know, she just returned also from Washington being recognized as the uh, elementary principal of the year for the state of New Hampshire. And Again, as part of that, uh, she uh, went to Washington to receive her recognition from uh, the U.S. Department of Ed. But, you know, ultimately, it's the community that supports the schools, and it's obvious to me as I visit and talk with folks in the community um, about the, the passion uh, that the families and community and businesses have for the work that's done in the Hampton schools. Uh, I, uh, they are a model school district. Uh, they are continually recognized by the New Hampshire Department of Ed. Uh, they're often uh, members of our staff are often asked to participate and present various initiatives that have occurred in the district. And uh, Nate, Nate and I are proud to be a part of that work. Uh, but I, I really wanted to make a point tonight, uh, Chairman, to let the community know how much we appreciate their support. Congratulations. With that said, I'm going to quickly just go, just remind you, you've seen some of this as Nate and I presented in the fall, but I, the mission statement is there. The mission statement is, it's very clear. It's focused on children. It's focused on teaching and learning. I'm not going to read it, but that's ultimately what we're about. And, and as we, as you have gone through the budget <coughs> and reviewed it, and, and as Nate presents the, the numbers to, to support that, you'll see that the budget is all about teaching and learning. Back in June, uh, the, the, the school board <coughs> decided on six goals. Uh, we're currently working on those goals. Some of these goals will move into the following year. We'll move into the 15-16 school year. But our primary mission is around curriculum and instruction and assessment. So you'll see that as our number one priority. And in your book, we have more detail uh, in your budget book around what kinds of things we'll be doing under curriculum and instruction. The second is human capital and resources. Those are our teachers. Those are our support staff, our paraprofessionals, our, our cafeteria workers, our custodians. Those are all the folks that uh, make up our district. and. Uh, are just incredible people to work with and who are really committed to the children of Hampton. The, the third is communication and we've been very pleased uh, at the progress that's made and the progress that is continues to be made with our now uh, FaceTime on Channel 13, Channel 22. We have a, 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 a municipal agreement with the town uh, around franchise fees and we're able to move forward with that. Uh, we have a, a new website up and it have a, a greater presence uh, for the community. We just put in, as you voted in last year, money for a new student information system which allows parents to access through a, a parent portal uh, student work, student grades, uh, and other information. That is happening right now at the middle school and will continue to be developed down into the elementary schools. Uh, governance is really um, issues for the school board. The school board has been very active in listening to the community around policy development, um, things like calendar, school start times, transportation, a variety of issues, and they continue to address things around the governance of the school district. Uh, finance and facility, you'll hear more about that uh, later on, but um, we, we have a philosophy of zero-based budgeting. 
important, which means that we, when we start the budget process back in the summer with our building principals and our teachers, um, we believe that we, we ask the question, what do we need to support the needs of children? And so from there we start. We don't just take a look at our budget and say, well, let's add 3%. We have rhyme and reason for the, um, the uh, things that we have in the budget under each line and why we have that and, and, and we can justify that. And last but not least, and a, a big project that is going to begin, you'll begin to hear more and more about this, is the board has taken the position <coughs> that they do want to move forward with a renovation project at Hampton Academy. And so you will see when we come back to you in January, a warrant article to begin the process of looking at Hampton Academy. We've already done the studies, we've an analyzed the building, we've analyzed the programs, we know what we need, we have long-term enrollment, so we, know, we have all that information, so we're ready to take the next step and we'll, we'll be back to discuss that, but the board does want to look at Hampton Academy and the needs of that building. So the budget that you'll see and that you've looked at already will represent those goals. So without any further ado, I'm going to hand it over to my partner and uh, let Nathan walk you through it. Thank you. Uh, first, I, two things. One, there were two documents that I laid on your table tonight. The first was a single page, which was a reproduction of the very first page in your big, thick budget book. Mm -hmm. Because the very first number on the very first page was wrong. Not a great, not a great start. Unless, of course, it's the only thing that's wrong, which I'm really hopeful is the case. So, I gave you a copy of that all of the numbers that flowed from that were correct because they assumed the right number, uh, and so I, I wanted you to have a, I wanted you to have a, an updated book. The second is a 17-page handout that is really tonight's presentation. It includes not only the slides that I'll speak to, but also the goals that the superintendent just addressed, uh, and then um, you know readable sheets that reflect some of the pages that were already in your budget book, but it was easier to bring them to this document so that you have them. Does everybody have both of those? Okay. I'd also like, sure I'd also like to let you know that Ginny Bridal, chair of the school board, joined us just a moment after we started, and so we didn't have a chance to introduce her, and I want to thank her for her support and for joining us tonight. <clears throat> so if I haven't said this to you before, I'll say it again. Uh, father always told me, tell them what you're going to tell them, then tell them, and then tell them what you told them. So let me start with the, the, the big picture and then get a little bit more detailed. Um, but you've had the big details, and I'm going to try to stay at, you know, a couple of thousand feet to make sure that I pick up the big picture. First is that the current operating budget is $19,619,000. Uh, we also had a $300,000 long-term maintenance article, as you've approved many years uh, in run running. And then the child benefit article for Sacred Heart this year was $42,500, so that the total appropriations we're operating under right now is just under $20 million, $19,961,000. As I move then to next year, we start with the current operating budget, and we'll talk about the default increases, which total $343,000, which is a 1.75% increase. And then we'll talk about the requested items that are over and above that default which total $98,820, which is a half a percent increase by itself. When we're all said and done, the total proposed budget that we hope you'll approve and put on the ballot will be $20,061,260, which is a $442,000 increase. It's two and a quarter percent. But the majority of that, which I want to make sure I communicate, are items that are really already cast in stone from previous votes and decisions or were handed to us as mandates uh, or, or realities that are difficult for us to avoid. So we'll talk about that. I mentioned the slides. <clears throat> uh, one of the slides that I gave you was not so that you could read it. It was to draw your attention to the fact that in your budget book, as well as in the back of this 17-page packet, on page uh, 13, <coughs> to be specific, is a document or, or a, a presentation, I guess, a perspective that I have often used, which is trying to break down the budget into components that make sense. If everything teacher-related is staying the same, which I'm going to mention in just a second, no new staff, no reduction in staff, same teaching positions, 
if everything is staying the same, then it's simply being actualized against the people that are here, the degrees that they have and the actual contracts they have, plus whatever the new contract that we are under provides them for salary increases. If I can compartmentalize that, even though that's spread across 18 different lines, that is what it is. I and mean, you can look at the breakout of the lines, but the reality is if I can put it on one line and just show it to you, it makes it a lot easier to set that aside knowing what it is. So that's what these components do. I'm doing a slightly different version of that, which is more like that one-page letter that I put in the, in the beginning. That's what I'm going to speak to tonight. But if you have questions, that's the document that I go to to try to gut check what am I saying, what are we doing, what's really happening. So let me break down the default. Having said that, let me <laughs> define the default real quick. Remember that the default is the prior year, plus or minus legal obligations, uh, less one-time um, one -time appropriations, uh, and any contractual obligations that you have. Uh, the reason I build these in, in stair steps this way is because at the end of the process, on the ballot, you've always got to have the default budget. And in my past, there were always questions, if that number came around without much discussion, there were always questions about, well, where did that come from? Because that's the fail-safe number. That's the, hey, if the budget as proposed doesn't pass, then this is what we end up with. So it seems reasonable to build that and then add to or delete from that as we move to the proposed. So items that are in the default budget include salary increases for teachers, because these are all driven by the two-year contract that was approved at the vote last March 14. We're now budgeting for the second year, 15-16. We'll be negotiating again come this, this next fall. That, uh, that contract called for a 1.9% increase at the top of the scale, and anybody in the scale gets a step increase. The 1.9 is only applied at the top, and everybody else inside gets the step. That adds up to $179,000, which is, which is better news than it sounds, because when we Sanbornized the Warren article last year and estimated the costs, it was 7% higher than that. This is about 93% of what we had anticipated, which is due to the fact that we've had some retirements. We've hired, uh, you know, effectively and brought in uh, effective teachers that are doing a great job for us without necessarily going to the top of the step and spending all the dollars that we might have. So we, we appreciate the fact that that number is a little lower than it might have been otherwise. The second piece of the default is uh, mandates driven by New Hampshire retirement. New Hampshire retirement continues to be the reality that it is. You're talking about this on the town side, I'm sure. You're paying attention to all of the reforms, the challenges, the most recent lawsuit settlement or the Supreme Court decision. New Hampshire retirement rates are going up in both the <coughs> teacher category and the employee category in the schools. Uh, the contributions we'll make against teacher salaries are going up 10.7% uh, to 15.67%. To and the employee salaries are, the employee contributions are rising by 3.7% to a, a level of 11.17%. That total costs us just under $163,000 for next year. Energy is the next big category. And it's hard because I, hard for me because we worked so hard early on to find and generate savings in the area of energy. In this case, you may have heard some of this in the news. You may have heard it through the town's budget. The reality is, the commodity rates for us on electricity are going to go up over 50%. I had locked down at a rate of about 7.1 cents a kilowatt, and, and I'm good through the end of June 15, but we negotiate <coughs> out, we're going to be more like an 11 cent rate. And, and we're seeing, you know, real increases, not dramatic, but some measured increases in the distribution charges that come on the unit bill as well. Our budget's only going up by 28%. Part of that's because not all of the budget is, is the commodity. Some of it's the unit side. But the other is that you've done a great job as a community over time investing. We've rebulbed and reballasted throughout all three buildings. We're doing a pretty good job of energy conservation uh, as, in that regard. So $43,660 of new money in that area. And, and compounding that in the area of natural gas, our commodity rate is rising. I have locked down heating seasons at about 92 cents per therm, $9.20 a megatherm. Now I'm in there for this heating season at $1.30 for that same therm. So the rates are up 40 plus percent. Our budget's going to go up $35,000, increasing a little over 27 percent. And again, part of that is because there's distribution charges. The other thing is, if I hadn't talked about it last year, we did a pretty good job last year. We're going to do it again this year with a little bit of speculative effort on the market. So if I go to megatherms and talk in those numbers because they come to my mind, we were in at nine bucks roughly a megatherm. 
and owned, we owned a certain allotment of gas, right, last year when we logged. When the market went to 28 and to 38 and to 75 bucks or whatever it was on the spot price market, all of our boilers, save one little one, but all of the primary boilers in three buildings are dual burner. And we've got oil tanks that are filled, topped off, and ready to go. And when the market went nuts, we flipped over to oil, burned oil, and sold our gas on the market and made the profit, which we then put against the budget. And you see the budget increases are softened some. I'd like to say that I could make it all go away, but the market, you know, only ran a given number of days. And so, uh, and so Keith Lassard, facilities chief, does a great job, he and his staff, because it's 10 a.m. and it's time to go flip boilers, bang, 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 bang. And then one of them doesn't fire, there's something wrong with the oil, get, you know, you got to get Palmer and Sicard in here. But it was an interesting winter. We made some real savings that way. We're going to do it again this year. I'm hopeful into the future we'll be able to do better. But right now, I can't imagine I'm going to lock down at anything better than that $1.30 a therm. Uh, it's not that we have a lack of natural gas in this country, it's that we can't get it to the Northeast. And if you haven't had that conversation before, I'd love to sit and have that conversation. There are people that know it a lot better than I, but the pipelines that we need just don't run with the capacity where they need to to get it here, and someday maybe. So that's $78,900 of new money in that budget. Health insurance has given us back some. We had anticipated for the current year, we had budgeted for a 5.6% increase. That was the average increase across all of our plans. That was the guaranteed maximum rate given to us by Health Trust. When that came in as an actual, it was down 3.6, so a 9.2% swing. We spent roughly $2 million on health, so a 9% swing was about $180,000 of savings that we're seeing in our financials this year. Looking forward to next year, they've given us a guaranteed maximum of 3.8%, which I calculated about 11, 110 grand. But that's offset by 180 savings, so we're actually in health insurance suffering the increase next year and still seeing about $73,000 of reduction in the budget. Can I make a yep. point? One of the things that, they, that we did in the district was we <coughs> created a district-wide wellness committee. So teachers, administrators, myself, Nathan, we sit once a month and we discuss wellness issues. How can we um, help our staff stay healthy? How can we cut our costs back? And um, part of the reduction, which was a significant reduction last year, was because our claims are down. And our staff is using strategies that the, uh, the, the um, Anthem provides for us, like um, going to a hospital that has a lower cost for an MRI or an X-ray. So because our staff has become very knowledgeable about that, uh, we, we feel that that's contributed to some of the savings. And, and I, again, kudos to the teachers and to the administrators for really taking that on seriously. The last kind of catch-all category in the default includes student transportation. We're a multi-year contract that we have with first student calls for 3% increase. That costs us $16,800 of new dollars. But there's a reduction anticipated in this budget of one special ed paraprofessional, which is somewhere around $16,000 in value. And then all of the other changes that are in the default budget net out to a reduction of $5,475. They include that our property liability insurance came down at $1,320. Our debt service on our bonds is down $2,731. By the way, those bond schedules were in your packet, uh, in your board, uh, your budget book, in case you had an interest. Our workers' comp is anticipated to be up as much as $4,153. Now, that's a, we're on a multi-year plan that caps our increase, and I'm hoping that it's not going to be that bad. Our, our claims history hasn't been horrible, so I don't expect to see an increase quite that large, but we're budgeting for the cap. And so if I recap all of those default changes, uh, they add up to $343,195, which is that 1.75% increase over the current. So that's the default. Beyond that, $98,000. The biggest chunk of that is in salary uh, and wage increases for non-union staff. I didn't say it before, but let me say it out loud. Teachers we negotiated last year, and we voted their contract in in f March of 14. So we're budgeting for the second year of their contract. Our paraprofessionals are in negotiations with the board right now. We have a tentative <coughs> agreement. The board will hear the terms of that tentative agreement Thursday night. The union is looking to ratify tomorrow afternoon. Hopefully by the end of week, that'll be uh, locked up, and then you'll have those details when we come to talk to you about the Warren articles on the 6th of January. So this budget holds the 179000 we talked about for teachers. No 
no increases related to paraprofessionals, although we actualized. And in most cases, they went down because we <coughs> hired some people that were cheaper on the scale than people they'd replaced. And so there are adjustments there, but it's only to actualize. Beyond those two union categories of teachers and paraprofessionals, the rest of our staff are non-union. And so the salary request of 2% increase is applied against our custodial staff, our secretarial force, our technology team, as well as our administrative staff. That amounts to just over $30,000. And on the info tab in your budget book, there was actually a colorful green and salmon or green and pink kind of highlighted sheet that identified account by account how much that 2% represented in, in which account, so that you could see that. Beyond that, there was $300 added to overtime for custodians, and there was a $4,500 that we added into the salary lines for our after-school programming. We've had just great success with the after-school programming at all three schools, and in, in honoring that and in recognizing the need to continue to grow with robotics programming and so on and so forth, we added some dollars so we could do more programs in those afternoons. Just a quick note, those programs aren't just uh, um, uh, sports and clubs uh, like Nate mentioned. It also includes things like after-school homework club where kids are getting additional help. Um, and the board has also, also authorized uh, the use of a bus after school so that we were able to transport kids at 4 o'clock to get them home. So it's really helped in terms of those youngsters that are struggling a little bit with some concepts may not be the whole year, may only be a part of the year, but they're getting the extra help from our staff and that's included in some of those after school things. So those total salary changes in the request add up to just over $34,000. The next biggest item uh, is by itself the request for a, a part-time human resource assistant position at the superintendent's office. We are we have been inundated by compliance demands, reporting demands, especially the most recent has been the, the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, which says that because there's a marketplace created and you have to identify everybody that is working a regular 30 hours and you have to look at a six month look back or a 12 month smoothing and you have some strawberries and when you're all said and done, there's just more data. Data we have to collect, and I really have to start collecting on teachers, for instance, a calculation of how many hours they work. Everybody really is fair game for are, they, are you complying and are they eligible or are they not eligible? And it's not as simple as saying, heck, they're all eligible because you have to report. The universal notification <laughs> related to our 403B, our health, uh, the new summaries of benefits and coverage, again, it came out as a result of the Affordable Care Act. The routine communication we have to do has really exploded over the last two or three years. Beyond that, there's a lot of things that it would be nice to do, which feels like it's as simple as just keeping a good old tickler file, but we're, we've been pretty thin coming in as SAU 90, trying hard to honor the decision that was made to, to withdraw and be our own entity, and wanting very much to keep a bead on what you were paying and would have been paying to make sure we don't ever get there. But there are so many things we could be doing. We talked about wellness just a second ago. If I want so badly for us to be communicating with our staff on a regular basis about the ways that they can be maximizing the programs that are run by our health provider. Every time we miss a deadline and I think, wow, if I had just stopped, if somebody had been able to remind everybody three or four times, you know, pepper them, remind them if they just submitted that document, they could have gotten another 25 bucks of free money back for just for putting in a form. Those are the kinds of things on top of the reporting and compliance that we'd like to be able to do a better job at. This person, we're talking about a 20 hour, not more than a 20 hour a week position, uh, hourly. Uh, in the budget you see it, it calls for, I think we put in $18 an hour. Uh, the total dollar value, $18,720. To, to see if we can't do a better job communicating and to, to help with carrying the burden with some of this. There's so many other elements on the HR side, but I, I want to share as much as I could about that because that is a new position. No benefits, simply a part-time hourly job that we'll have. That we'll have. I don't mean to stop Please. you, but who covers that area right now? If <laughs> you're looking at us. <laughs> <laughs> we both share it. I do a lot of the work around hiring and teachers and interviews and certifications and reporting all the data that we have to report to the state around certification, numbers of students in special ed, numbers of students in ELL programs. 
um, teachers there. Uh, they now are requiring us to submit how many teachers are highly effective, how many teachers are effective. I mean, it's unbelievable. Just recently, I've been, uh, I must have a 30-page document from the Office of Civil Rights. I have to report out all kinds of data on, on you know, suspensions and discipline, uh, teachers, teacher certification. I mean, it goes the full gamut. Um, so that the Office of Civil Rights has this information so that they can collect their data and do their research. But again, it's, 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 a, it's work that uh, has continuously pulled Nathan and I away from his finance and my curriculum instruction and assessment. Not that we've, you know, we, we, we're, we're a team in that office, so we, we, that's how we've operated. But just a point, and I don't know if this will come out later on, but you know we're in we're in year four of SAU 90. Our costs for operating SAU 90 are still less than the costs that Hampton paid four years ago to SAU 21. So we've been able to, because of the efficiencies that Nathan has alluded to, along with the, the, this team approach and, and running an efficient operation, we've been able to keep those costs well under what, what SAU, char, SAU 21 charged this district. So, we, you know, we, we were very tentative about asking for this part-time position, but we knew that it, it, would serve, it would serve our staff and it would serve the district well. One more tip that we hit critical mass, just in case it was a conversation at all, hit, hit the public comment. Uh, our bookkeeper, Mariah Blaine, account, the accountant in the office, she had uh, her second child in the week that preceded Thanksgiving. And so Kathy Tuck, who's the admin assistant uh, handling the phones in the front door, she just completed her second payroll run sitting at the desk out front this morning. Uh, Mariah has a laptop and software to dial in from home. She's been great at helping us keep things rolling in some regard, but, uh, but we've tried to vault even past that challenge just with current staffing. This person will be somebody who will, who will intentionally become a backup, not only to Mariah out back as we might need her, but also to Kathy out front. So it, there's going to be some great synergies if with, it's approved. With the philosophy of cross-training, we've been able to accomplish a lot. And this position would be cross-trained in, the, in, the, in that financial aspect should we ever have a, a need. The next category then is an adjustment to the salaries of our technology team. The dollar amount that was requested here was actually twice what you see. Uh, the board deliberated at some length on this item in the course of their review of the budget and they ultimately voted unanimously to cut the dollar amount in half. We have four members on the tech team. There's the, day, the, the director of, of technology, a network administrator who manages our infrastructure and keeps the network running, a computer technician who runs around trying to prevent all of the repair and maintenance costs that he possibly can, and he's done a really good job, by the way, and a data clerk, data management clerk, who is now the power school guru and handles all of our student data, among other things, helps with grade reporting, uh, report cards, progress reports, uh, and a lot of the state reports that we have to do uh, in terms of enrollment and student information. But they have been involved in a, we've been involved in a conversation with those members of that team now for all of the last three years about how their salaries and wages have lagged behind other districts in the region as well as industries that they are, uh, have opportunity to pursue. You certainly can't compete. You have to appreciate the fact that there's quality of life or quality of, of, of work being here. But we were trying to make some adjustments to try to answer some of those concerns. Uh, and so the board, as I said, uh, cut the dollar in half and agreed that we could move forward. That's $7,488 of correction or an adjustment, if you will. We've just talked about $3 amounts that are salary related. We got to pick up $7,430 in terms of the FICA and the retirement and the workers' comp and unemployment to go along with that. Beyond that, there's another $31,000 worth of miscellaneous requests that are in there. But here's the absolute biggest ones that pop out. First, the board decided uh, earlier this year, in, uh, after a presentation done by folks from Hampton Academy, that they would find $5,000 to support financial scholarships for students uh, attending the eighth grade New York trip that they do each year. Uh, they fundraise and fundraise and fundraise, uh, and they fundraise for themselves, but they also fundraise for those among them that have financial hardship and need support in order to participate. So the board went ahead and said that they would find that 5000 and they subsequently added that to the budget proposed for next year. We had seen a reduction in assessment accounts in terms of budgeted dollars, 
as we are making the transition from the state or uh, the state driven kneecap test to the smarter balanced uh, test that will test our core subjects in reading and writing and mathematics we had taken a step back from the NWEA which was a, another assessment tool that was being used in the districts and so we cut our budget budget's going back up now by eighty five hundred ninety dollars because the, the schools have collectively chosen the star assessment as a tool that they'll use to to work in tandem with and to offset if you will the smarter balance so that they can have ongoing assessment tools all during the year that they can use repeatedly with students to try to gauge uh, student progress and so we see an increase in that area the next big issue is that in the area of fire safety we have over the last three years spent significant dollars in in fire safety engineering for any number of things in the buildings and uh, yeah I, I don't want to I don't want to touch on a soft spot but I that department I think has been challenged to meet some of our needs while they're meeting all of the others in the community and we have ended up being directed to to spend dollars in this way we just haven't had them in the budget so forty five hundred dollars in new money there to do fire safety engineering for the projects that we need to do in the buildings and then there was a, a need for repair and maintenance increases of thirteen thousand dollars that the board uh, adopted in their budget work that they did to, in November all of that adds up to just under thirty one thousand dollars and so if you go through the budget you can find two or three hundred dollars more uh, you know in, in <coughs> incidental somewhere but that adds up to the ninety eight thousand eight hundred and twenty dollars which is half of one percent But when you put those two together as I tell you what I've already told you the default of one point seven five and the proposed or requested of half a percent adds up to a two and a quarter percent on today's tax rate that looks like sixteen cents next year sixteen sixteen cents per thousand of tax impact we have we've worked hard over the last cycles to, to keep our cost as low as possible even with even having budget reductions with three hundred forty three thousand dollars tied up in contracts that we approved energy and enhanced retirement this this was a more difficult year to see anything that was close to flat I want to talk to you about revenues briefly the revenue projection was in your your book I believe it was on a blue piece of paper right at the back of the summary tab right before you started the breakout of functions uh, I put it as well in this packet tonight it's on this slide I can tell you that there's nothing there that's really new or different other than to tell you uh, that our adequacy grant has fallen to zero for next year so remember that adequacy comes out of the education trust fund it's fed by any number of things business enterprise tax business profits etc etc that's the only money that really doesn't come from here it comes from elsewhere and we were only getting in the current year thirty four thousand dollars and we are slated to to receive zero next year at the very back of the packet I gave you a draft of the warrant we're not really ready because the board other than adopting or approving the proposed budget the board has not considered and approved any of the other warrant articles but I tried to you know crystal ball just a little bit because as you do your work you're really looking at the big picture and so to give you a big picture this slide just tells you that as I just suggested the operating budget ought to cost us right about 16 cents a thousand at today's tax tax base our paraprofessionals agreement will be item number two that's traditionally bed in the twenty thousand dollar range it's not a huge article by itself I don't expect it'll be significantly different this year which is is a, a small a small uh, uh, tax impact comparatively uh, the long-term maintenance will be here again three hundred thousand dollars that's proposed it's in your your packet so it's here every year so there's not really any new tax impact there Article 4, we'll talk about more when we come back in January. The superintendent alluded to us moving forward with work on Hampton Academy. That article will ask to collect, uh, to, to raise an appropriate dollars so that we can find ourselves a, an owner's project management partner, start to work to identify an architect, and then bring some preliminary engineering work together so we can find out, or we can communicate to the public what the project would look like, what the facility might look like, and what the costs would look like before we move forward. And then we expect the sacred we actually received the sacred heart petition today it's with the clerk she'll let me know tomorrow that there's sufficient signatures that's at forty six thousand seven hundred fifty dollars which is a, uh, about a tenth of a cent of impact it's only up it's up forty two hundred and fifty dollars but again those <clears throat> those other four articles we'll bring to you next time I, 
you know, we've got questions to ask, but because I threw it in there so that you'd have it, I think we're talking about a public hearing on the 14th, Wednesday, the 14th of January. Uh, our deliberative session is right now scheduled for the 3rd of February. And uh, I'm looking forward to being back here on January 6th. But more importantly, looking forward to any questions that you might have about, about the budget. Questions on the presentation. I'm going to start with you, Jim. Okay. The outline is actually easier to deal with. A couple the questions. Sonny? Uh -huh. I see the enrollments going down. Right? <coughs> you know, I don't see us in the business of micromanaging, you know, but the town was looking for one and a quarter percent, you know, and I see you're coming at two and a quarter. Is there any place you could bring it into line? I, for example, you got your three hundred thousand for repairs and maintenance, and then you got another thirteen thousand added to it. You know, you don't, that's really that's really one question. The other question is the Article Five on the warrant articles. You know, when the principal was here, like Sacred Heights principal was here last year, I asked him if there were other towns were contributing. You know, because my feeling is. The taxpayers shouldn't be supporting a private school. You know what I mean? If Phil Flexital came to the town and said, well, give us some money, uh, I can imagine what we'd say. You know, that's the other issue. Then I've got one thought here. You know, the town's been looking for a community center or a senior center, and every time I go to the town hall, I look across the street and I see the South Street School. I was just wondering why, you know, town, you're running the school. I was just wondering whether there could be room to put, open it up to the community. You know, I think senior citizens would love to work with kindergarten kids. And those are my thoughts. Those are great thoughts. I mean, we've had discussions uh, around the senior citizen center. I mean, we recognize that there's a, there's a need in the community. Um, they've actually had some discussion about what that might look like at Hampton Academy. And would we be able to accommodate seniors there? Um, I don't have the space at, um, at Center, but um, certainly I, I think that's, that's a great place for seniors to be. And also it allows us, I mean, there's, there's, there's food. I mean, we have a regular food service program every day that would be easily able to accommodate them. So. I, I hear you, and I think the board has heard that, and members of the board have have similar concerns as you do. The enrollment is it's very very interesting. The enrollment has been very flat. We've actually lost another um, uh, 20 youngsters this year. Um, we did look at the enrollment. We have long-term projections, and it's going to stay flat, if not go down a little bit more. So we're being very very cautious. The problem we have is when and if those class sizes get down below, we. The board has in the past, as you know, um, uh, had reduction in force. The last two years we've had reductions in force. So um, as those numbers uh, reach a place where we think that we need to do that, they have done that. And I anticipate that would continue. Our costs are really associated with labor. You know, nearly 75% of our budget is, is associated with personnel and labor costs. And, and so the where do you go where do you go to cut except when the enrollment drops below the levels that the board feels are are sufficient for class size do we do we address that um, hey salaries and benefits are 83 and a quarter percent actually higher than 83 and a quarter percent are tied up in our people and their benefits I will tell you that because of dwindling enrollments <coughs> we already looked at consumption for instance you know consumables, if you will, or discretionary budget, the stuff, which includes computers and copy paper and the whole shooting match, uh, we really tight. When we talk about the zero-based budgeting, that's one of the areas that we do it the most. Obviously, staffing is zero-based every year because you say, what do you need, what do you have? We haven't contemplated reductions in force other than the paraprofessional that we talked about. Uh, but we did go back when we went through consumption and dial back for enrollment. The challenge is that Although recently we started to see a real, a real drop in oil prices, we've been seeing rising shipping and handling costs on all of the materials that come now for the last three cycles. And so 
so some of the savings that we're finding in terms of I don't need as many copies or as many versions or as many quantity of these things because I don't have any many kids is getting eaten up by rising costs of getting it here as well as the rising costs of the stuff we're buying. So, but we are diligent in that, which is part of the reason why you don't see increases in any of those areas. In, in, so. in 2012, the the supply account for this for the schools for the kids that that that's construction paper, pencils, cranes, you know, clay, all the things that the kids use, paint and so forth. The the actual was uh, seventy six thousand, and and we're asking for seventy five thousand one hundred. Now, in those course of that time, the costs have gone up. We've had to pay, we're, we pay up to 8% to 10% in just in shipping and then the cost of the product. So we've actually decreased the amount of supplies with increases in, in our costs. So we're, we're trying to do exactly what you said. It just. And then the other question I think is one that obviously we can answer better and folks from Sacred Heart will be with us on the 6th of January. I think they're coming to answer questions that night. I, I will tell you that today they hand delivered their petitions and, uh, and the, the, there was a petition article for Seabrook as well. I don't know about any community involvement beyond that, but they are they, they're petitioning Seabrook with a Warren article again this year as well. We have, um, there are 180 students at Sacred Heart enrolled. I talked to the principal today, and 49 of those students are Hampton School My students. My is 42, so. Yeah, it's gone up a little bit. It's 49 this year. But they're asking for, what? Uh, Back? 46.7. They went up by $4,250, uh, which is essentially. The seven five, students. Yeah, more kids. And so they'll, they'll be here, and they, they stopped. The person that delivered it today was asking about the dates, and I said, you know, certainly you'll be here. Join us on the 6th. You can answer questions, and then the public hearing. In fairness, this is not SAU 90's Warren article. Right. So right. We, don't, we just carry it as a conversation petition. Conversation to um, the night we have the Warren article, Sunny might be best because then they can come and propose it and explain it and not give us any preconceived conceptions before that. W one other factor, if I could bring to your attention also, I talked about supplies. Those are, the, um, those are consumables that the kids use, you know, pencils and cranes and paints and all that. But in addition, the instructional textbooks, the materials that they use, the resources, um, the, the fiction, nonfiction, the, um, the reading, spelling, vocabulary, uh, writers, uh, writers um, word, word skills, vocabulary at the middle school. Um, in 2012, it was 60855 and this year we're asking for 60550 Now, I know $300 doesn't sound like a lot, but again, we're faced with the co increased cost of the, of the supply, and yet we're able to try to keep that as level as we possibly can. Michael? Yep. I just have one question. On page 7 to 17, yes, sir. you have an increase of 2% for the all non-union staff, custodians, technology, secretaries, administrators, etc. 2%. Okay, and then on the next page, 8 of 17, you're giving me tech team, which sounds like it's the same as yes, sir. on the previous page. A, an increase. So I, I'm a little confused. Is it a double whammy then? It's a double. It's a double whammy. It, the the seventy-four hundred dollars is a, additional dollars beyond a two percent allocation. If I go in and grab that document, it's um, it's in yours. I hope it's in. I was just following your oh, presentation you now. I wasn't <clears throat> making this up. Oh, no, 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 you're not making anything up. I just want to find it. I want to be able to tell you that the 2% uh, in the area of technology was a $4,200 increase. And, and so the, the request that was initially made was, was essentially $15,000 to break out across four individuals to try to adjust their salaries. The board said that that was too rich, the 2% plus plus a given number, and so they cut the number in half. They essentially gave us the 7488, and, uh, and in your budget book there was a kind of a breakout of how that might be done or how the dollar was arrived at. Mm -hmm. None of those work agreements have been written, and, and that will be evaluation-based, but it was to try to make them more competitive with the places they might choose to go otherwise. We so, recognize that you can't always compete with 
Waltham and the 128 loop and the technology sector that exists in the greater area. But that was, it was an attempt to try to address woes or concerns or, or angst from that team now for three, three years running. Well, I was just looking at it from the point of view that Hampton is the most desirable place to live in the whole state of New Hampshire. So, therefore, based on that alone, they should be working for us for a very low rate. For very low rate. We ought to make them all move here. If they all move here, they recognize the difference. Wouldn't they? Thank you. It's great. Thank you. Um, I'm going to assume it's obviously a bad thing to do. The reduction on page 6 of 17, the reduction of the special period. Yep. Special ed power. Right. Um, is that due to reduction in special needs? Those are driven. Yeah, at the moment, or identified population. Okay. Um, the only other comment I have is, um, is this going to be enough? To, you have one late bus on the next page. You have one late bus This is going to cover the entire town? We, we actually right now have three that are built into this budget that are crisscrossing. Uh, and and they go on multiple days and they serve Marston and, and the Academy. And so, uh, you know, one bus isn't necessarily hitting the whole town. They're splitting it up and, you know, it's not as simple as one goes to the other side of Route 1 because it's right. not, because somebody's got to go down to the beach. And, but yeah, those are, and it's somewhere in the vicinity of $100 a day. And um, is, it, is this so contractual we, within? It's with built the into the, it's built into the, it's optional. So it's not a fixed cost that we have to pay. It's a, it's a transactional cost that was broken out in the last contract that we wrote so that we could identify what it would cost if we added a bus or deleted a bus on the late run. And I love that, by the yeah, way. Good, it's, thank you. It's, it's great for the kids and it's great for the families. Thank you. I really have no comment. I went over this line by line, page by page, just as much as I did the municipal budget. I'm comfortable. We're talking about a half a percent increase over a default we're really cutting the onion very, very thin. I pass. That's a lot for Jerry to say. Right. Okay. I was going to say I'm about to have a heart attack. Yeah, here. I know. <laughs> uh, but I think that for everyone who has gone through the book, if we have a lack of questions, it's because you've clearly defined your expenses. I wish everybody at home could see what we see in this book. And Nathan, I love the way you give us your summary and all the bad and the good not it's a very transparent budget thank you for that of course we can't let it go by the chair without having a yeah i know it's my job <laughs> um and i think you know where i'm going to land a little bit and that's on the new position we're seeing a lot of new positions and unfortunately they come in as part-time and they nurture into full-time how much certainty do you have that you can keep this to part time? <laughs> I'll wait. For, I'll wait and hear if there's a little bit more silence before I give my answer. How's that? Pins for as drop. long as I'm here. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I can't judge what will happen five years down the road, but we had that very same discussion with the school board that was brought up the concern that it would uh, evolve into a full-time position. We don't have that need. And in part because Nathan does a piece of the finance and I continue to do interviewing, credentialing, and all that other kinds of, you know, reference checks and all that. So that person wouldn't be doing that. In, you know, so those pieces of the whole HR department that we need to do. Mm. Um, I, I feel that, that 20 hours a week is ample for us, uh, given the numbers of staff, given the student population, and absolutely having a good handle on the kind of reporting that we are required to do. But to, I would not, it would not be right for me to sit here and say <laughs> to you that uh, forever and a day we would always keep it tw 20 hours. That, 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 that's, we've been transparent and open and forthright with you. and. Um, Nathan and I are telling are, are requesting this halftime because we believe that that meets the needs of our s staff and in our and our operation. I like to be just as transparent. When we 
look to build SAU 90, we took SAU 21 and the superintendent's roles and everybody's roles and we laid them out on a big board and looked at them for an entire summer. And we went down each one and we decided that it was never going to work the way it was because there weren't enough hours in the day. So it became a matter of, if you wanted to accomplish A, you're going to have to let go of B. And until we can stretch that clock, it wasn't going to happen, and thus you were born. Sometimes we get in that situation again. I, some of you, especially new members on the board, did not have the advantage that some of us had on that committee to see how lean and mean we really created this so that the taxpayers would adopt it. You have succeeded what we started out to do with our intentions. Intentions are very good in their beginning. They're not always successful. You've made it a success because the bottom line was our students and them getting the face time that they needed. With the accolades for the staff and they are now getting that, they've been getting it since SAU 90 was formed and I'm very happy and I want to say there's a success factor there. For that reason, I'm going to jump on board with you and recommend this. I would so much rather have Ms. Delaney figuring out how to take the money away to make up that $18,000 from the utility companies, spend his time doing that and at the same time having our staff know all the benefits that are open to them because I confess I couldn't even tell you what my own policy reads from my husband's insurance and I think that's a huge benefit and knowing how the insurance trust is working there are savings by not putting claims in who are being rated um, something we don't really discuss very much just you have insurance and that's it, but there is that other side, just like car accidents. Now people have ratings on how many claims they have, and, and it's all classified as a whole. So we've had some discussion on that. I feel some responsibility, though, to say I can see where new legislation in the federal government has burdened you with things you didn't have before, and you do need help with that. If I saw in the short term that this was going to explode to a full-time position with a declining school population, I would not be as happy to support it. But as it is presented tonight, I do feel that you do need the help. You do not, you're not top-heavy or middle-heavy or any heavy anywhere when it comes to administration in the SAU, and I hope everybody joins me in feeling that sentiment when we go to vote. Um, I don't have any other anything else to say right now. Thank you. Good job. Last year we talked quite a bit about uh, the Chrome uh, laptop yeah. or what, whatever tablets or whatever Chrome they books. were. So how did that work <coughs> out? Could you just hit on that a little bit, please? Sure. So uh, the uh, the decision, the, the ultimate decision. I'm not sure when we talked. Might have even been in, in September when we were in. The decision was made late. I'll be very candid. It was really late in the season, even late, you know, as the summer goes, when the decision was made that we should go ahead and move in that direction. Uh, Chromebooks were ordered. The, the review that was done pulled the Dell, uh, the Dell Chromebook 11 model <clears throat> as the highest reviewed, best rated, and most back ordered <clears throat> product <laughs> in the market because, because, I mean, they went so far, Dell did, as to pull it off. You, they pulled it from uh, circulation on the internet. You couldn't just go to Dell.com and buy a Chromebook individually. They took all of their assets and drove all of their production into the education market because it was such a success with the, with the marketplace. So we put in an order, uh, ultimately anticipating or planning that we would, over three years, cover grades three through eight uh, in a program that will essentially hand a Chromebook to a third grader incoming at Marston and in, to a sixth grader incoming at the academy. And those units will be expected to last them three years. And when they leave the sixth grade, we'll, they'll turn it in. And when they leave the eighth grade, they'll turn it in. And, 
and so we, we, we went through the process of establishing that cycle. Uh, the Chromebooks arrived, uh, certainly not for the first of the school year, but they arrived this fall. Uh, end of October-ish was when we made them available and we started plugging them into classrooms. We were challenged in the, uh, I could be remembering wrong, might have been the second week of November by the time they got rolled out, but uh, to be candid, we, uh, we, we plugged them in place and found some success uh, in, uh, in a couple of areas, literally like in a couple of rooms, and found some real struggles. Uh, it's amazing that you can have Dell's wireless um, access point in the ceiling and Dell's Chromebook on the desk and they don't want to talk to each other. So we really struggled and had to fast track and bring in a competitive product, uh, which just happens to be the product we've got at Center School, but that didn't help us because we didn't put Chromebooks in Center School. So uh, we brought a competing product in and plugged them in and have been able to blanket uh, both the sixth grade wing at the academy as well as the third grade area at the uh, Marston School. And we've taken those Dell wireless uh, tools and shifted them to other spots to, to blanket us with better wireless coverage. And we're off and running. It's the, the challenge now is for the teachers just to continue to find new and inventive ways to uh, integrate that into their daily routine and to find the availability of one unit for every kid in their classroom as a different concept than five units at the back of the room that you have to cycle kids through or, or a, uh, an irregular access to a laptop cart that can service your classroom. And so I think things are definitely headed in the right direction. Our rollout to, f our rollout to third and sixth the next year should be at the start of the school year. They should ro walk in and there they should be. Um, we are already covering fourth and seventh grade uh, res uh, no, access issues so we can be prepared for those to roll forward to the next grade and I expect that some of the hiccups that we you know anything new rolled out and had a couple of bumps and anything that we suffered like that ought to be well in hand by the time we roll that out again next cycle so excellent the Chromebooks are going away after three years is the plan right now now we'll wait and see uh, I just got a call yesterday today or yesterday reporting the first oopsie <coughs> smash <laughs> the first damage we haven't insured them they're 300 they're less than $300 we got them for 260 bucks essentially uh, and with volume discounts our our property liability coverage has a thousand dollar deductible the cost of insuring all of those was almost as much as buying a third more and I said we're certainly not gonna have slippage over the course of the three years of a third are we really doesn't seem like it we bought 24 extras against a hundred and well against um, 280 we bought 300 300 was enough to cover the third grade and the sixth grade and have a couple of dozen left over if we kill all of those dozen, those 24, I'm going to be really surprised. But if we come through this year and we find out that our, our slippage rate is really as bad as all that, then we'll go back and try to negotiate an insurance policy moving forward and come up with a different, a different arrangement. But for right now, the kids are taking pretty good care, and so are the staff. Uh, I don't know that we've done a whole lot of going home yet, but when that comes, we might see a little bit more slippage and we'll just confront some of these challenges as we go. But really having that kind of coverage and when you walk into a classroom is outstanding. So Thank you. And the other thing that I want to mention is that it is such a pleasure and you must you must be able to sleep well at night <laughs> to know that every penny is accounted for so carefully and so precisely and so transparently. And it's it's a pleasure to be able to ask you any question about any one of these items and you know immediately and that, that transparency is really wonderful. I gotta, so. And I, you, the editor, I should just say thank you, but I'm inclined to talk more than I should. In Exeter, be careful. In now. Exeter, I had <laughs> ten budgets, you know, and it wasn't twenty million; it was eighty-six or whatever. And then I went to multiple meetings, and I have to tell you, the lure of coming to some place that was manageable, I did my best to remember every bloody number then too, and I got a good head for numbers, so I can remember things, which is of, uh, I'm lucky in that regard. But I have to tell you. It, this feels better than that did because I had sleepless nights there because there was a lot of stuff I knew I didn't see in the course of every day or every week. But I look at this financial report on a daily basis. I, anal I analyze it pretty closely, easily once a month. Generally, it's once a week. And so it's, it is nice to know, you know, when you take a vacation day, for instance, when will that be? I don't know when that will be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all you got to do is call, and I got it, because yeah. it's, it's just not that much compared to what, you know, what you might see in a different arrangement. And that's the nice thing, to be able to focus this in intimately, I guess, on 
on this school and these people. I think I know, I probably know all but three or four people in the district by name and by face at this point. And that probably doesn't pay dividends or pay dollar value, but boy, for me to know who we're paying and what we're doing and what classroom they're in and what building and what they do, it's pretty neat to be able to have that kind of command of the information. That's so. what makes Hampton special. It is. And you know, here, here. I talked earlier about the support of the community, but, but both Nathan and I realize that this is the community's money. This is, this is their hard-earned tax, their hard-earned dollars. And with great respect, we, we watch that very carefully. That is a priority for us. And um, um, we have good people that work with us, and, and, and so it can happen. And, but again, it, it, it's, the, it's people's money. Okay. As simple as that sounds. Thank you. Thank you both very much. Thank you, Jim. Um, just to piggyback on uh, Steve's comments uh, for a moment, I, I think that exchange you just had um, proves the point of why you need the extra person, the HR person, because I think we'd rather have you spending your time doing that, what you're doing, rather than dealing with the minutiae of HR stuff. So, um, you know, you have two talents up there with the superintendent and to see either one of you dealing with that every day just is pulling you away from other things and it doesn't make any sense to me. But um, So I, I think that's necessary. But the only um, the only words that jump to mind on, on the whole budget is um, is really modest and reasonable. I mean, anything you're asking for in here is uh, the increases, I, I think, were very reasonable and modest, actually, the 1.9 and the 2%, small bump to the tech people. Um, I mean, you have, to, you have to keep them, or you're just going to be turning them over all the time and you're spinning your wheels there, so... Um, you know, the small bump with the after-school program. Uh, you have to spend what you have to spend to keep the kids in school after school because that's where they really should be because they're not getting in trouble there. So um, I, I think it's it's reasonable. I think it's every, everything you've asked for is modest, so it's, uh, it's easy for me to support. The after-school program brings to mind, we just recently, we have a Girls on the Run program, and it's a great confidence booster for the girls. You know, they run every afternoon. They have folks from the program join us, along with our uh, teachers, you know, at Marston. And it's a, n a number of girls participating in it, and it's pretty much whenever they can run. We uh, sent a whole team of youngsters up to Concord, you know, because that's where the state meet is, is like 1,200 girls running top two winners were from Hampton. It was unbelievable. Mrs. Gostick came home. She, was, uh, she called me, texted me, I guess, and said, you're not going to believe it. But, you know, these two young girls, one was a third grader, just blew everybody away. And again, the opportunities are just there for kids. I, I, I wish my grandkids lived in Hampton, to be honest with you. All set, then. Um, thank you. Quite possibly the finest budget I've ever seen in my life. Um, uh, could we get a quick Channel 13 update? Oh yeah, we're <laughs> we're, uh, we're. I was hoping the technical difficulties. Yeah, were Yeah, really no, we're ready to go. Um, there is a um, the 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 channel is ready to go. We're ready to s step in because we have a lot of ideas that we want to be able to use it for. So I've been working with John Judson, who's our part-time media coordinator and uh, John does all our filming and then he does all the work and he works with the team here it's really a great relationship it's a real collaborative effort between the school and the town which is a plus right um, we're waiting for the final message that we can go with it and uh, uh, we've been on top of it. Comcast has been slow in responding to the town I understand that the town fathers have um, stepped up the pressure. Uh, I've made a few phone calls to Comcast myself um, because they have been slow to respond. But uh, my understanding is all the, the special wiring and the equipment needed is now in place. Uh, John now has access to the station of 13 so that if there's any glitches, John's and he lives in Hampton, is able to make corrections. So we're ready to go. It, we, we really are waiting. It's a, a plus. I agree. 
By the way, can I make one other comment? The money that's in the budget around that program is a wash because of the relationship we have with the, using the franchise fees and John's salary and the equipment. So it is a wash. Uh, Nathan reports it in the revenues, and but we have to report it out in the budget, as you know. Whatever you put in has to go out. So it's no cost to the school district and uh, the community. I said earlier I did see it working last yeah, last night for a few minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you mean live, the live portion? I'm not sure if it was live or not, but I was watching school on 13 and the planning board on 22. So okay. oh. obviously there was a difference. Really. Wow. Then everything went black. Only a couple of three <laughs> years, huh? Not bad. So you continue <laughs> around the table. Uh, yeah. Persistence. Congratulations. Marvelous presentation. Thank you. My granddaughter participated at Curls on the Run, and I'm very impressed with the program. She did not win any races, <laughs> but it's an excellent program. Um, I have two other thoughts. One, stay on top of the technology issue. I really think... A future is in technology, and if you can't keep your <coughs> technologists satisfied, you impair those children's opportunities to survive and grow up. And my other thought is more of a global one. If you engineer the academy, consider putting in a design that would incorporate, not a senior center, but a community center. Here. Uh, it, that might give you more support for redesigning the academy financial support for the community if you can engage more participation in its use. Not only, not only will a collaborative effort benefit the potential success of the project, but obviously there's, I think the board, I hope it's okay to speak this way for the board, I think the board would be agreeable to doing anything that we can to limit Hampton's need for other projects. No sense in going and building one of those and one of those and one of those if you can tack on a little bit here and a little bit there and make multi-purpose space so that we can satisfy the needs that exist. And, and so I, I really think that part of us moving forward to find an appropriate project management partner to help us, because again, we've talked about we don't, we don't have the bandwidth right now to take on all of what that kind of project would look like. Uh, and, and we've got an outstanding asset in Keith Lassard, but he's got a job to do too day by day. So. Getting somebody that can help us will help empower us to do uh, the best job in making sure that we seek to address as many possible community needs as we can as we start to, as we look to take care of what the academy needs too. So. Uh, technology um, at Amber Levine, our, our computer tech teacher at oh, yeah. Marston. Uh, Bobby, your granddaughter probably sees Amber weekly. Uh, just was awarded a ten thousand dollar grant. Um, and uh, one school in the state got a grant. They gave one to every single state. Um, Marston applied. Marston got the grant, and uh, the deal the deal with the grant is that they have to teach the kids program. Mm -hmm. Hour of code. Hour of yeah. code, it's called, so and it's been paper. huge mm -hmm. across. Right. So the, I went into uh, Amber's classroom this week to see them. They were uh, doing code. Uh, to develop all kinds of designs, and it was incredible. And they were like, they were tied to it. They were focused on it. There was no, you know, they were there solid for an hour working on their designs, writing their own code. It's unbelievable. My granddaughter participated in the hour code and was yeah. very impressed. Yeah. She was so trying to do Minecraft coding. I could not do coding. Yeah, you are right. We need to be on top of it, and um, we're very fortunate. I, I can't say enough about our team, and um, I think that's why the board supported a little bump for them, because they, uh, they have really done, uh, brought lots of wonderful things for the kids. Thank you. Super. Excellent job. Excellent. Uh, on a couple of things, just to piggyback on what Bob said about the community school, when I was teaching in Massachusetts, we built a school, a middle school in the late 80s, and they built it as a community school. I mean, it had to have community school in the name, and they got a lot of extra money through that with going out for grants for seniors and going out for a lot of grants. So, And then it was utilized seven days a week just about you know, all day long, which was very nice. So it was, I mean, sometimes it was a pain to teachers, you know, but, but it was still very nice that the school was utilized all the time, and there were seniors in and out all day long. We talked uh, to the, um, we t we've also spoken to the librarian, Mrs. Cooper, 
And so there's some interest there about doing some collaboration with them uh, because obviously you know they have some needs, right? Their space is, that's a busy place. <laughs> and uh, so we've actually had some discussions about how we might collaborate together to, to uh, broaden the opportunities for the entire community, not just the kids, but everybody. And a couple of other things. One thing, the reduction in your para because of a special needs group. If you had a special needs student with severe needs move in, that would be something you'd have to look back at. You're gonna have to you have to pick another one up if need be. But in this case, again, transparency and our fund balance yeah. has been carried. You know, we're carrying a quarter million, three hundred thousand. So if we have to pick up an eighteen thousand, seventeen, sixteen thousand dollar aid. We'll, we can make it happen. If we know we don't need one, we'll go ahead and make the cut. And should our backs ever get against the wall <coughs> relative the to that, we have the trust fund. Now, we didn't, we haven't funded it because it was felt that we had put enough money in that. Let it alone, let it sit. What's in it? 213000 Yeah. So we've kind of just left it alone. The board made a decision not to fund any, put any more in it. And uh, we've been um, fortunate uh, in terms of that. So. One, just one other, Nathan, I asked you before, and you said it was hard to do it. A per pupil cost, approximate? So last year, 14831 That's Uncle Sam's, that's Concord Black Box, yeah. where they strip out food service, and they strip out some capital, and they try to make it comparable apples to apples around the state. They just published us at 14831 uh, It was 13704 the previous year. Costs went up some, but enrollment did go down some so I'd, you know we divided by a smaller number uh, our it's a little it might be a little misleading we're k-8 but because right now we're we're approved as a k-8 elementary we show up in the elementary column uh, even though we have sixth seventh and eighth grades there state average was 14,002 in that published report so we're a smidge above I think we might be a little bit more above on the elementary side if you ripped out the middle school because I think the middle school you have some not economies of scale but you have some different um, delivery models you don't have the same supports that you have in place at the elementary level and if you look at the state averages by and large the elementary kicks I mean the middle school kicks down a, a peg ours are all lumped together but that's so that's the the most recent information thank you an excellent job you bet thank you um, thank you both. Um, I share Madam Chairman's concern about the additional position to handle the human resource type, type things. Um, I applaud you for going to the part-time position of 20 hours. I, as was mentioned down here, don't want people being tied down with that type of issues when you've got more important things that you could be addressing your time to. Um, the one thing I'll say about in talking with the, the school is that um, I came here two years ago expecting you to come in with a budget that was, for lack of a better word, fat, and we were supposed to trim it down. I think you guys do a great job of already trimming the budget. You talk about the taxpayers, but <coughs> I, I firmly believe that you already do that before you come here. So when you come and you suggest position, I take your word that it's well spent. Um, the second thing that caught my attention, though, was... Um, the student enrollment being flat and I know most of your expenses are fixed expenses so if you have five pupils fewer your fixed expenses pretty much stay the same so I don't get concerned about temporary peaks and valleys what I would be concerned though you, you mentioned that long term it could be flat for a long time mm -hmm. I don't know what the break-even point is but if, if it's continual that we're gonna have a constant decrease there's got to be a point in time where we say geez maybe we do need to to rethink that so I don't know how far in the future we need to look at that but I'm confident that you're looking at that but I would assume if if you suddenly dropped a couple of students it's, it's not as it's not as if all of your decreases are in one class you could shut down one class they're spread out all over the place. so I understand that but yeah. there would be a point where if it Eventually continues for a long that. time then you'd have to rethink that so. yep. We saw a drop in the enrollment uh, babies born in 2008, and if I can just bring you to 2008, you remember now everything tanked, right? The economy really, really went down. Uh, people made the decision not to have babies an expense. But interestingly enough, this past year at Center School, uh, they picked up 17 new students. Now, we don't know whether that's attributed to, you know, just moving to Hampton, but when Tim was in Washington, Secretary Duncan told the, the award winners, 
that they would see an uptick in their enrollment because people want to move to a community that has a blue ribbon school. So, you know, we're kind of playing, you know, we're watching the numbers really carefully. It's, it's kind of fascinating. So we hope that, um, that uh, people will get back uh, in the business of having babies. But <laughs> that's my business, so I yeah. sort of want to encourage that. But we're keeping an eye on Dave. Good, Dan. Okay, I've got a, I've got a couple little bumps here. The first one is on that maintenance and repair. I, maybe I missed it. Is there something specific in that thirteen thousand dollar bump? Yeah, the for those that didn't see the the board's deliberations, one of the items that came up in the course of their conversation was that the repair and maintenance contracts that exist on the freezer, walk-in, cooler walk-ins of the kitchens at the three buildings have been carried uh, by the food service program and um, that was a facility cost that I, I, I believe that at some point historically had been picked up by the district had been part of Mr. Lassard's facilities budget and there was a, a lengthy conversation about whether or not it should be again and the ultimate decision made by the board was that that should be a cost uh, uh, carried by the district and so the Dowling Corporation is the is the firm with whom we've contracted for a number of years. Uh, it dates back to a loss, a significant loss that they had in one of the mm -hmm. significant coolers. Mm -hmm. It failed and there wasn't a response time guaranteed under contract and by the time we actually identified it and got repairs and so over, we'd had a significant food loss, et cetera. So it's a, it's a, it's a decent contract and we get great response and great service and they shifted that and carried that. They're gonna carry that now as a district operating expense. So that's what that thirteen thousand was. Okay. It, it went it went hand in hand with the conversation about the food service program continuing to suffer up and fail and fail to next. do its own, you know fail to hold its own. And so, so that was they were trying to contemplate what is it that's happened historically that has led to that. One of the big things was at some point in the last five, six, seven, eight years, the director of the program, the salary was shifted from the district to the program. It was difficult for us, I think, to, to, to argue, difficult for us to suggest there was anything wrong with the director's salary being carried there. And so that conversation kind of ended, and the salary of the, of the program's director is a part of the program's um, expenditures. This was something that had been identified as a, as a cost that had at one point been carried by the district and could be again, and it might lead to the program being able to stand on its own better. But that's where Right after that, I was going to food service. Okay. And that's sitting there at a, a little bit of a deficit. So the food service program has seen, um, I think, uh, well, not I think, I know that they opened this year with some significant reductions in staffing. So one of the things that we did last year was we had a lot of conversation about and planned for and communicated with employees about uh, change in the staffing at, at the three buildings. Not so much at Center School because there's only three individuals. They're all part-time. It's only three individuals there. But one of the things that was done as we launched into this school year was that we eliminated all site leadership. So at some point in the past, there had been established uh, remote kitchen site leaders or kitchen, they call them site leaders actually, yeah. And there was a surcharge, an upcharge in terms of their hourly rate. And these were all veteran people, obviously. And so their rates of for six-ish six hours a day, five point. 5.9 had climbed close to 20 bucks an hour. We eliminated those and replaced them with three hour positions that helped with running cash and, and helping to manage the lunch period. And Mary Borg, our, our director, is responsible for site leadership of all three kitchens. And so she's out and about moving and grooving a lot more than she had been. There was, a, there was some cuts there. And then in, in the two larger kitchens, in terms of staffing, the Academy and Marston, there were some changes made in the staffing as well. All of that led to, well, those numbers don't come right off the top of my head, but I want to say that our, um, I want to say that our, our labor costs had been chasing upwards of 185 to 190 thousand dollars, and they're estimated to be down uh, in the 160 thousand dollar range. So we paired off 30 some odd thousand dollars worth of labor, uh, because labor was really a controllable item especially in the midst of new regulations, new rules coming in. The Six Sense program was, you know, an application program. If you're meeting all the nutritional guidelines of the new rules and, and regulations, we'll give you six cents a meal. 
but you could have added a zero to the end of that, another decimal place, and it wouldn't have <laughs> chased some of the new costs that went with meeting some of those right. some of those nutritional demands. And so we uh, we raised the prices ten cents, which was to meet federal rules. Uncle Sam's reimbursed us about six, two hundred two dollars and sixty five cents a meal. We were only charging two sixty uh, two fifty. We raised it a dime to two sixty. Uncle Sam raised their reimbursement a little bit, and so we'll have to continue to chase Uncle Sam, which is what the law says we should do now. Um, a ten cent raise like that generates another seven or eight thousand dollars, maybe ten thousand dollars <coughs> total in new revenues. It's not huge; it's not a panacea all by itself to make an no, increase like that. So hand gap. in hand, hand in hand, we're closing the gap. Uh, we anticipate right now the way the financials are are being considered. And oh, by the way, that thirteen thousand dollar that that uh, repair and maintenance that's being that's that's in the food service expenditures now. Uh, we're we're hoping that we're going to be in the black, but it's a but it's a work in progress, and and they're working really hard to stay stay tight on on, on meal preparation and food costs, make fullest possible use of the USDA commodities that we get, uh, and keep labor costs really tight. Mm. My last one is I see. Um, impact fees received 13,000 this year so far Are you so that's only a very deliberate process so in the current year let me just make sure I know what I said yeah so 13,000 13,000 was an expectation uh, when we did the budget last summer I mean excuse me last winter ultimately we didn't we're not going to receive any impact fees this year we, None we, at took, all. we took that out when we set the tax rate we didn't estimate any we're carrying a balance uh, at the end of December of last year. We were carrying a balance, I think it was December, maybe it's no reason, 120 some odd thousand dollars. Um, in impact fees. In impact fees are available to us on the town side according to the ordinance that are sitting and waiting, and we haven't drawn down on those. One of the things we talked about, and that's the board hasn't yet had that conversation, and I haven't done the homework, but that the monies in that article that I talked about with uh, owner's project management and starting the architect, can that seems be used reasonable that? that could be an impact fee expense and if it is and the board is agreeable we could call down on impact fees to offset that so there'd be no tax impact to start that work I would highly recommend you get that right. ball in motion right. because there are time limits to those impact fees six years and, and, yeah, and I we're know within that, well yeah. we had a round we here <laughs> when we got here, you I say that because grand, yeah. time right. seems to go by really right. fast well, and yeah, that well, doesn't guarantee that the board will say that that they want it to go that way, and I can't speak for them. It's a great concern. Can I just tell you that that 120 is all inside of the last 12 months, mm -hmm. because we were pulling down every 12 months mm -hmm. the December 30th okay. balance, December 31 balance, so as not to have that happen. So 127,000. I'm sorry. 120,000. Within, within is, the last. Is within, it's got to be within the last 12 months because this is the first December that we haven't drawn down the balance. They missed out on some before, didn't they? I'm sorry. Because the time did they miss out on some dollars? No, we got right to the right wire, to the wire. Right to the wire. Right. we okay. brought it up with a commercial like this and everybody went, oops, and we didn't lose any. But okay. it would have when gone back came. to the when developers. When we first came, that was when it, it yeah. was brought to our attention. And, and it was, so I, I, I feel that I'm bound to bring it up every please, year. Please. And also, as we talk about impact <coughs> fees into the future, on the other side, on the municipal side, I've often said, impact fees and not petty cash and this is proof of it in the last the last round hundred twenty thousand dollars that will now hopefully pay for that survey I, yep. we got to leave it to the board, the but, board but that seems like a good use the chair had asked the question two years ago you know be mindful of keep a running balance of I may certainly ask and so we keep an eye on it and and we had been I mean we had a year that was twenty two thousand and then there was a year that was um, 55,000, 45,000, and so I, 13 had been the placeholder. The number was greater than that, but knowing where we had already decided that we thought we needed to head with Hampton Academy, I held off and I said, okay, we won't estimate it. We won't ask for it. We let one year's dollars roll because then we may have enough money so that we can, and at the time I didn't have any sense of what this, this kind of starting the project, this cost would look like. But I figured if I could get up over a hundred thousand, that would be enough of a, enough of a, of a, a nest egg, so that we'd have sufficient dollars to to do this without tax impact to get started. So, mm -hmm. 
I won't let that go. Cause That's how it was meant. Oh well, God. well planned use. Yep. Instead of nickel and diming it, let it accumulate to a point, but keep your eyes on it so you don't lose it. Sure. Um, I have no further I questions. I just have a final comment, something Absolutely. to think about for the future and down the road. Um, you know, the demographics is changing a little bit. Um, in the community. Uh, we have an ELL program, English Language Learner Program, um, and we provide services K through 8, and our program has doubled this year. Now, granted, it's a small program to begin with. We had n anywhere from 9 to 11, we're now up to 20 students. So we have doubled, uh, and so down the road, you're going to see some changes relative to that. Right now, uh, we have a position in the bu budget, just one position that services our entire um, caseload uh, and we also for the first time last year under uh, the direction of Dr. Stetson our pupil personnel service director uh, Sarah was able to get us some grant money so we're going to continue to go after that um, uh, title three grant money to help us but be aware that the demographics are changing and we're seeing uh, a lot a lot more diversity than has been in the past I think it's good for our schools I think it's good for the children I think it broadens everyone's experiences, but we have to be prepared in order to service those children. The other place that we're seeing an influx a little bit is from the base. Uh, they had a very large um, uh, contract that was granted to the base, uh, and we're seeing families move into Hampton uh, that um, the, they have work at the base. <coughs> um, one mom came in with four kids and um, indicated that there were more coming. So we just, you know, just be aware that um, those things are happening. Now, that's not going to impact us a lot. You know we have enough room. You saw the enrollment. I'm not telling you that we're going to have all kinds of problems. But those are things that you need to be aware of as we go, as we go forward. Um, we're, 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 unless there's any other questions, Eileen, we're, we're ready. We can't thank you enough, the support, and the just it's just been, it's just absolutely incredible and uh, we can't we can't thank you enough I think comments we, tonight were great too thank you as always superintendent Murphy. um anything else before we take a vote on this final number oh. eric if you would run the number again the number is for 15 16 20 million 61 thousand two hundred and sixty dollars that's proposed it has been seconded. All those. Oh, well, we, well, we don't know. What that was seconded before we started the round with it. I know you just said it, if there are going to be any questions. Oh, and then I looked around. Did you have one? Yes. In, in all fairness, we'll let you have your question. Um, I didn't write all the page numbers down, so I'll do this on twelve hundred five zero three three two point seven eval and testing. Why did this double? Um, the the uh, th these are tests that I use when a youngster has been uh, referred for services, and the uh, team of um, the teachers, the administrators, parents uh, meet, and uh, it's recommended that youngsters go through testing before they actually would be um, have a special education uh, IEP. Um, those tests represent new protocols developed. Um, that that update the test. In other words, the norms are updated so that the comparison numbers are more relevant. Uh, so those represent new protocols for those exams. And they are expensive. Oh, renormed. And you found a good one. Okay, renormed. Yeah. We do the tests. Okay, I just was update curious them. when right. I saw the That's doubling it of it. Right. Yeah, I, we, I, we brought Gary, that I think, asked the same question. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I must have missed that part of it. Um, uh, regular home to school rose by, I'm on 2721 50510. Regular home to school rose by 16,806. Does this have to do with the bus company contract? That's it. Yeah, 3%. We've got a multi year of 3% three, three each year. I have to tell you, just to, again, when I know something, I'll throw it out there. You've, we won't all remember it necessarily, but uh, I made the mistake of getting elected to the school board in my town <laughs> back in March, <laughs> which I'm sure makes me better at this because now I have, I've seen it from another perspective. But 
they just came in with an 18% increase in the busing contract with the same vendor. And the answer that was given was literally given after some cajoling in writing, and it said all contracts must be adjusted to meet a certain expectation, I guess, in terms of overhead cost coverage. And this is Great Britain, I think, who now owns the, <laughs> has the controlling stake. And I don't know if that's coming, but I'm prepared for that now because this, we're budgeting for year two of a multi-year, a five-year deal. We're budgeting for year two, but uh, we may see at the other end of this that I can't chase down something like 3% again without some correction because that's what just happened to us in, in Newmarket. Mm -hmm. and, and we're going out to bid chasing, but there's not a lot of competition for this, mm, this firm we've got for a student. They're pretty much the game, so <laughs> something to keep in the back of mind. Um, one other one that always gets me, and I'm, I'm sorry I didn't know the answer to this, on 1100 to be contract positions, could you just explain what other is? I always get bothered by this. Transportation other? other? No, it's on 1100 2 B. I think it has to do with um, Oh, that's the B. breakout of staffing. Break, yep. Breakdown of staffing. I just, I always get curious when I see other and I don't know what it means. Oh, 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 yep. There's a whole column. You, can, you don't have to flip it, but I can just tell you. We give you. We give you a grid of all of the salaries under the teaching contract, and there's a column there that's called other. And really, the only thing that shows up in that right now, in each of those cases that you'll see, are extra days. So our teachers are contracted for 188 days. That's 182 student days plus six more in-service days. Those individuals that you see something under the other are contracted for another two or three days for the summer. And this really is our reading specialists who do assessment of students over the summer, along with our guidance counselors who do intake and registration, and our nurses who get involved in that registration process as well, among other things that they do to get themselves ready and get the school ready for the start of another school year. Oh, okay. So those are other, other, those are extra days. And as long as we continue to have nothing but that in that column, which is probably true, I can retitle that another year. It'll make more sense. It just <laughs> okay. Well, I, 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 I say, I yeah. always get concerned when I see Great other. Great question. Great question. Um, 1100-50641. Text. Academy, language arts, writers, readers, workshops. Um, Big 10,150 was put back in this year. Is this sort of like on a two-year schedule? Because I noticed every two years it seems to change. Kind of. Well, I mean, we've only been here, I guess, you know, we've only been here a short number of years. Right. But what happened, uh, what happened um, two years ago, or no, just one year ago. One what year happened a year ago right. was we took what was roughly a sixty thousand dollar budget and we we ripped thirty thousand of it away because that was all related to English language arts texts. Mm -hmm. and we shifted those dollars to the curriculum instruction uh, supportive curriculum in improvement area, which is twenty two ten. We shifted it there because there was a curriculum committee work being done to review our curriculum, decide what we should be doing, especially with the incorporation of the Common Core standards, and then what tools we should be using. So for the intervening year, they used the money out of 2210 at the direction of the committee and the superintendent to pick and choose resources. Now that that committee has brought forward its recommendations, we're moving those dollars back into the normal um, okay. regular education textbooks line so that they can continue to make their purchases of those tools there. Okay. If you go to the 2200, you'll see the decreases in those areas. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. That's where I got to. Yeah. Or was it yeah. when I got to yeah. um, right. the textbooks? I saw the huge jump, yeah. and then I read the fine print farther on, and I said, "Okay, I figured that yep. one out." Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I just couldn't let him the one. No, no, hey, hey, don't. Just don't let him off. What you paid me for? <laughs> Jerry, we won't make you say the number the third time. Okay. We know where we are. All those in favor? Unanimous. Unanimous. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you, folks. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you January 6th. January 6th. I'm sorry? We went around. <laughs> what? Yes. What's going on now? We did. We went around the We did. We went around. Oh, right. Right.
Yeah. 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 Yeah